Hi and welcome back to the tutorial sessions on Unit 302. In this particular video I'm going to look at tasks 2 and 3. They're both fairly straightforward and we can take them together. So let's start by having a look at the learning outcomes for task 2. Now you can see from the syllabus for 2.1 or 2a that uh, they have identified a number of different characteristics and what you need to do is pick out the five that you think are most appropriate and that you've got examples of ideally in your team. It's a good idea in each of the five examples to pick out the characteristic in bold type. That makes it very easy for the assessor to see what you're talking about in that particular section. Task 2b is a slightly different format. Instead of the five fields that you fill out with your five examples of characteristics, you're now asked to write uh, more of an account about behaviours. They don't specify how many behaviours you should cover, but um, I would suggest five to match the characteristics. Um, this is the one box on the assignment brief where you probably are going to need a little bit more space than they give you, possibly 50% more. But, you know, five um, short paragraphs about each of the behaviours that you've chosen, uh, giving examples ideally from your team ought to do the trick. Learning outcome number three has three questions. So we'll start by looking at 3A where you've got a, a box type format again on the assignment brief where you're asked to identify the advantages and disadvantages of two different leadership styles. And this question causes a little bit of confusion, so I'll try and make it as clear as I can. If we look at the indicative content for 3A, it talks about a number of different leadership models. We've got Tannenbaum and Schmidt, we've got Hersey and Blanchard, etc. I'll try to give uh, examples of a couple of the models and how you might use them. Uh, if you've done the CMBD course, you will be familiar with Hersey and Blanchard's situational leadership model, and you'll even have done the little questionnaire yourself to see if you have a preferred leadership style. Now, Hersey and Blanchard actually has four leadership styles in it. It has tell, sell, and participate, delegate. And for the purposes of answering this question, you could take and combine the cell tell as one style of leadership. It's a, a management approach where you're pretty much telling people what to do. Its advantages are particularly apparent if you've got new people or people who are unskilled. And then you could take the participant delegate styles of leadership and combine those for a more leadership approach where you've got more experienced people and you're delegating. You could, on the other hand, take something like Tannenbaum and Schmidt's leadership continuum, where at one end of the spectrum you're pretty autocratic, you've got control, you're telling people what to do, and then you move to the other end of the spectrum where you're uh, democratic and you're allowing people to make decisions. Uh, they both work in pretty much the same way. Choose the one that you feel is uh, most comfortable for you. Moving on to 3B, this is probably one of the simpler questions on the form. You're asked to pick communication methods. I like to see two or three in each of the communication method boxes and explain your reasons for choosing them for a remote team as opposed to uh, an on-site team. Ideally, give examples from your own organisation if possible. Last question for task three, um, 3C, is about motivation. And you're asked to give four examples, again, ideally from your own team, of, of how you succeeded in motivating people. Uh, you might, for example, want to pick recognising achievement, um, explain how you did that, uh, and how that works with regards to something like Maslow's hierarchy. On the other hand, you could also pick something like a hygiene factor that you've removed, um, showing that you understand that hygiene factors like, you know, a really cold workplace, or, or poor supervision can really demotivate people. Uh, pick the four from the indicative content that work well for you or, or indeed come up with other examples. Okay, that's it for this particular tutorial covering tasks two and three. 
and thank you for listening.